Super pumped for another edition of Inside Pac-12 Football every single Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time on Pac-12 Network. Mikey, I'm Yogi Roth with you. Who is, who is one of the biggest standouts in week number one, do you think? Well, to me, it was no-brainer. Zach Moss. Uh, I mean, this dude is yeah. a beast. I think that's a, probably an apt way to describe his performance and what he's been able to do on the football field. And just like that, it's magic. Zach Moss <laughs> is ready to rock and roll with us. Almost 200 yards on the ground. He's in the weight room. Just What were you just doing in the weight room? Or were you just – let's just pretend like you were just lifting. I would imagine after almost 200 yards on the ground, the body's a little sore. Actually, that might be the best way to start. How are you feeling after that performance against BYU? Uh, I'm a little nicked up, but, I mean, I'm good. I'm ready to roll. Take us inside the rivalry. We're all watching it, and it looks like, like you just want to play when you watch. Bodies are flying around. Guys are talking smack. What is it like for you to have played in now three of these things and the final one, of course, less than a week away or less, less than a week ago? Uh, it was really cool, man. I mean, once you get into that type of atmosphere, uh, the blood is just running through you. You just want to go out there and you want to perform to your best of your ability for your teammates and your brothers. And, I mean, we have so many in-state guys here. And that rivalry really means a lot for uh, those type of guys. So I try to come out there. I try to do my best for those guys. Zach, in terms of your development, I know a couple years ago you run for, actually it's back-to-back -back seasons over 1,000 yards, and yet last year you still are able to hit that mark despite the fact that you missed five games. I've heard this from other players, that sometimes they're able to take things in when they're actually banged up and they're not playing. For you, what did you learn in that process when you weren't actually on the football field? Uh, to take everything – I take everything for granted. I mean, you never know when your last snap is going to be. Um, I mean, just that day, I was outside and I was practicing and um, I was having a good practice and I was thinking I was going to go put the team on my back. And then that night I get injured and I'm out for 10 months. And I mean, you just have a really chance to just realize everything you do have and be grateful for everything you have and just try to make the best of everything. Has that impacted the style in which you train, compete, and of course perform on Saturdays? Uh, yeah, I mean, I told myself I'll take everything a lot more serious. I mean, my body, my, my mental, uh, just everything. And um, I look at my passion and my love for the game. It's just it's grown, and I try to go out there and I try to show that uh, Thursday night against uh, those guys down south. And I'm trying to show that each and every week. Zach, you don't have to leave, right? Well, that wasn't a fire alarm in the background or something, right? That's just the uh, warning that we got meetings a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're late, and I'll make sure that you're not, but just in case, just blame it on Yogi Roth because I know Coach loves Yogi, so you can always just point the finger his way. Uh, Northern Illinois, the opponent, it's a rematch from a game last year where the, the team only scores one offensive touchdown. What are your memories of that game? Uh, that game was dirty. It was grinding out. It was, it was a tough game. Um, I didn't think we came out on the offensive side of the ball really well like we wanted to. And like uh, We practiced all week. But uh, I think this week, um, we're coming home. In the first home game, we're going to come out here and try and give our fans a better show than we did. And we went and played those guys down at their, uh, at their stadium. So, I mean, I think we're ready for the task. And, um, I mean, it's always a good chance to play these guys. We've been talking a lot in the preseason after week one, how you, this team is ready for the moment, the big stage, which is potentially a college football playoff berth, a repeat visit to the Pac-12 title game, and potentially even more. I'm curious for you, the maturity of this team, can, can you feel it a little different in terms of around the hype, you guys know how to handle it now? Yeah, Coach Whittingham does a great job of getting us ready um, to try and handle all these things and being off of social media and not trying to, you know, like some guys do search your names and search what's going on and things like that. Um, this team does a very, very good job of just being, understanding that we're still underdogs. You know what I mean? Not that we won nothing, we've not accomplished anything. And then they do a really good job of uh, just staying to what's been getting us to this point right now. Zach, you just used the term underdogs, and I think you're, you're right about that in terms of perception, but Yogi and I have been talking about this for, for weeks and months, and I know he has been banging the drum probably louder than that drum in the background, letting you know that you got practice come, or a meeting coming up in a couple minutes about how talented this football team is. You and your teammates, do you enjoy the fact that you know that you guys can go and potentially win a Pac-12 championship, but nationally this program probably doesn't get the respect it deserves? Yeah, I mean, we know the in, in the, the talent we have here, um, but our job is to go out there each and every week and show put the world on notice that what we have here in uh, at Utah, and we're trying to go out there, and this is the year that we definitely want to do that, and we want to cement that, and um, I really feel like we have a chance to go ahead and do a lot of good things this year if everyone just stays healthy and 
stays uh, with the same right mental. We've seen guys come back for a senior year, similar to you, and you publicly have stated that one of your goals is to leave as the all-time leading rusher at Utah. You're 382 yards away from doing that. How do you balance the personal goals of wanting to do that with the attention around that goal and, of course, your job within the program? Uh, it's, it's really easy. Um, I make. I try not to make anything about myself. You know what I mean. Um, when I like when I was said I was coming back, uh, the team had a bowl game, and uh, I kind of knew I was coming back for a couple weeks. And I didn't want to put that above the bowl game, so it was really easy for me to shy away from anything that's about me. Um, I understand that if the team has success, then my success will come with that team with the team's success. So that's kind of how I just try and tie those two things together and try to focus on the team. And, Whatever I get off the team is just uh, rest of the bones for me. Zach, it's abundantly clear you're a team guy, and yet from an individual standpoint, as Yogi just referenced, you're doing special things. One of four running backs to ever have back-to-back -back seasons of 1,000 yards. You're going to be on the precipice again just based off of what we saw in week number one. You're probably going to hit that 1,000-yard mark again this season. Do you think about legacy? Like if I said to you when you graduate and leave this program, what do you want to be remembered as? Uh, this is one of the best used to ever come through here. I mean, someone that came out here each and every Saturday or Friday, whenever the game was, that was going to come out there and play with me. Um, blood, sweat, and tears for his teammates and for the fans to come out and uh, have a great show. Um, at the end of the day, when I sit back and the season's over and I'm gone, I can sit back and uh, just relish on what I did and just be glad of I know I gave everything I had. I know everybody back in South Florida in the 305s fired up for everything that you've done, specifically you're on the precipice of graduating, so I'm curious, what's the most interesting thing in your backpack right now as you've started <laughs> class? Uh, honestly, there's nothing in here right now. Honestly, there's nothing in there right now. I had class a little bit earlier today. Um, I just brought it out of my book bag to take some things home uh, from practice there. I just assumed that you were walking around with, like, if it wasn't books, just dumbbells. <laughs> just kind of rolling around campus. I mean, it's not like you need those extra workouts. I've seen you on the football field, but I just assumed that that was the case. Nah. <laughs> so what you're telling me is, Zach, like you're kind of a lightweight around campus then with the book bag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I'm only saying that to you because we're thousands of miles away. I'm in San Francisco. You're in Salt Lake City. I don't have to worry about uh, any sort of ramifications of a statement like that. Uh, Zach, appreciate you giving us a couple minutes, man. Really, uh, look, it's been a joy watching you the last couple seasons. Stay healthy this year and take care of business in week number two. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Once again, Zach Moss giving us uh, some time here. You've talked about a lack of respect for this program. They move up one spot in the AP Top 25 poll. You were screw We were in the office before we got out here. You were screaming that this team should be in the top 10. Yeah, you know me really well. I try to be pretty mellow. But to me, it's just a lack of awareness. AP poll, coaches poll. Are you paying attention? To have Florida ahead of Utah, it would speak to me and scream to me that you're not. So you look at them on defense, what they did creating tournaments. You looked at how physical they were on offense. Nobody played perfect, but they played well enough to say they should be, and I believe are, the favorite in this conference and have the tools and skills and physicality to play at the highest of levels in college football. All right, Northern Illinois, Utah, once again, Pac-12 Network on Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, complete coverage at 9 a.m. And I know I'm not alone. No one else surprised that Yogi is a mellow guy. We got complete reaction of what's happening on Pac-12 football fields every single Tuesday on Inside Pac-12 Football on Pac-12 Network and the Pac-12 Now app.